And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Would you like to go on a safari with me? No? Okay. But let's pretend it's the 1800s and that we're big wigs and we're going off to hunt things. Hunting Party is a little card game, which when I saw it, I thought, all right, let's see what it is. Because I didn't write it off, because Guerrilla Games is known for putting a big, cool game in a small package. See their wonderfully neat little game, Lifeboat, and Who Would Win? Those are cool games they came out with, so I was certainly interested in looking at Hunting Party. Are you interested? Well, if you are, you're in the right place, because we're about to dump it. Each player gets one of these hunters that they'll have, Lord Phineas or the Spaniard. Each hunter has a hand limit, like here's the Colonel, uh, he has a hand limit of four, and they have a special ability. He can play an action card from his hand before Fate Resolution. Or Crazy Betty, she has a hand limit of seven. At Gay Man, draw another gold card and decide which one to keep. Her special ability is not nearly as good, which is why she has a larger hand limit. Now, what players are going to be doing also at the beginning of the game, is each player will be given two goal cards. And these are goals that will give you extra points at the end of the game as long as you have these. You're going to choose one of them. You gain three points for each hunter that dies. You gain three points if no hunter dies. You, you gain five points if nobody has more cards in hand than you at the end of the game. So that's an interesting way to go. And then players are going to get a handful of six cards in their hand. Now, uh, they're from this deck here, but there's only three cards in this deck. There are flea cards, like I'm showing you here. There are shoot cards, and then there are camp cards. So players are going to be have their handful of cards, and then one player is the first player, which is marked by giving them the box. And then, basically, I'm going to play fate cards. Let's say there's four players playing. I always draw, put out fake cards equal to the number of players playing plus one. So I put out these five fake cards. A vine bridge, backtrack, ambush, hunting accident, and jungle fever. Now, this is what a player does on his turn. He will, from this deck here, draw one more of these action cards. Ooh, another camp. He will then take one of these action cards from his hand. So let's say it's me, I'm like... I think I'll play at the camp, and I'll put it face down in front of himself. He will then take a look at these cards that are out there, and pick one of them that will not happen, and discard it. So each player is going to pick one that will not happen, and eventually, one of them is going to happen. So Jungle Fever happens. Now let's focus a bit here on Jungle Fever. When a card happens, there's one thing on the card that happens to everybody. That's down here. Each hunter reveals an action card from their hand. Those who match discard the card and repeat the process. So that's Jungle Fever. And that will make some people discard a lot of cards. Other, and then each player will have an individual fate. Depending. See the one, two, three, four, five? The first player will have whatever is underneath one. The second player whatever is underneath two. The third player, etc. If it shows this symbol here, that means they've lost a card. If it shows the symbol underneath three, that means they meet the natives. Now, if you met the natives and you camped, then you get to draw two cards. If you camp, though, and you do it when there's an animal, then you're going to run into problems and you're going to lose a card. Shooting, that's how, this is the main focus of the game, is you want to shoot animals. And that only works if there's an animal underneath your number and only if you're the first person to shoot. So if one shoots and is successful, then player number four is not going to get the card. And then this player is going to take the card, and it's worth that symbol on it. It's a lion. And it probably would have been good if they had put like a big lion up here in the corner as a symbol, because some of the symbols matter for gold cards. But it's not the end of the world. But what's really interesting is these different cards will have different things happen to them. And so when you're discarding a fake card, you're discarding that fake card not just based on the what's here, but what number you are, and maybe what number other players are. And so as each of these cards is different, you're trying to figure out the best thing to do. Now, after you, remember, you have these three cards to play. A flea card is always useful to play because you can ignore your fate. You can also, from your hand, discard a flea card to uh, ignore your fate. The problem with discarding cards is 
if you run out of cards, you're dead. So your cards are your life. So fleeing will escape a fate. Shooting kills the animal. Uh, and camping helps you when there is natives. Now, of course, if you play the wrong thing at the wrong time, you can run into problems. Again, basically, depending on what you're doing. If you camp when there's an animal, you're going to lose two cards. If you shoot and, and there's natives, they're not going to be too pleased about that. You'll discard two cards. And so, which cards you play, you're trying to get down to the right one. So, you go through the game. Uh, two rounds for every player in the game. And at the end of the game, you count up points for however many trophies you got. And for your victory point cards that you may or may not have completed. And then, of course, if you're dead, you still can possibly win. You know, your, your, your porters take home all your animals for you. And whoever has most points is the winner. So, that's Hunting Party. Now, the designer in the designer notes... Uh, he said that, you know, it took him a while to release this because he would think some people thought he was ripping off Lifeboat. And I can see that to some degree, but it, it, it's a very different game. But it's that style that I think is really neat. Because what you're doing in this game is you are trying to work against the other players. There's not as much negotiation. I mean, I, I suppose there could be. But the whole cool thing of the game is what card are you going to play and what card are you going to take away? Are you going to take away a card that specifically targets you? Or are you going to take away a card that hurts the whole group and will really have something negative on you or will you keep a card out there that will hurt another player hoping that they get rid of it it's, it's just a neat game because being last player here is a really big advantage you come down to two cards and usually which card you decide to get rid of makes a big difference which cards you play from your hand now and and uh recently i reviewed a game gears of war where they used cards as life points and i did not like it in that game it just didn't fit at, at all for me for some reason here it works better uh, be, just because the card management is the game, and I and I felt like if you lose all your cards, you're gone. It just it worked well in a in a short card game like this. We're talking a 30 minute game here, and it just goes smoothly. There's a lot. The only negative thing I can say about this game is that the little icons on it. You know, they have a big picture of the card, and then there's little icons what it does to each player. There's a lot of times where people are kind of squinting to see what they did to each player. And it almost would be neat if people had a one, two, three, four, five number that they could put in front of them. And so you say, oh, okay, that happens to number player number three. Oh, that's him. Instead of saying, okay, it happens to player four, one, two, three, four. Okay. I know it's a minor thing, but these are things I notice when playing the game. But overall, it was a very enjoyable ride. It certainly isn't like anything else that I've played. Uh, and so uh, it's, you're looking for a small game like this, which... You know, it's just a little bit of card play and trying to outmaneuver other people, I think, in what cards you play. And sometimes outmaneuver the effects that happen to you. This is certainly one I think that you will enjoy. Hunting Party. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then... This is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah.